Okay, so today I got for y'all a midnight tutorial. And what I mean by that is it is 12.19 here. So we're going to go ahead and try to jam out this tutorial for y'all. Uh, this tutorial is going to be based on a simple Samba-based installation. So we're going to pretty much be going over a fail-safe Samba installation. I've done Samba on Ubuntu, Debian, Dev1, Gentoo, and maybe one or, other, one or two other distros. Uh, and there's been some things I know uh, specifically when it comes to security, uh, depending on App Armor, PAM, uh, and a handful of other things. And sometimes I've had a problem with um, actually establishing a connection to the share via a client to the Samba server. And the reason for that was usually sometimes it would be like a mix of PAM and App Armor. And this wouldn't happen all the time, but it would be a roughly a once in a while thing, especially when I'd go to set it up for someone I was doing work for. You know, it's just something that, hey, you know, why isn't this working right? Why am I having to spend, you know, an extra hour on the configuration or maybe the Unix password sync feature isn't working right? You know, why am I having to do all this? So uh, in those situations where you want to just deploy a quick Samba server, you don't have to deal with all that crap. And you're just using it for internal LAN use. Uh, really just binding it to a subnet and just using a regular SMB-based password, that's fine. That's going to be all you're going to need for security. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be smart anyway to use, it wouldn't be smart anyways to use Samba over the internet. Uh, you're going to want to use SSHFS, you know, for something like that. Something that has like high-level RSA uh bank level encryption you know uh, for doing file systems over the internet you're not going to want to use samba now, samba is good for speed and it's good for internal use so that's what i do personally I use samba on my internal 10g network and then when i'm going over the internet i use sshfs so of course it's just a matter of opinion there's other ways to do file systems over you know the internet but that's how i like to do it so anyway let's go ahead and get started here so right here, I'm on a Debian uh, based installation. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, sudo apt install samba. Uh, yes to confirm. And let's go ahead and do sudo apt install samba. Enter. Yes, to confirm, enter again. So whenever you see those dbus errors on mine, just ignore it. It's because I'm not running systemd, I'm running uh, openrc. And it's just missing some basic systemd functionality. So sometimes some of the programs might scream a little bit, but it's not for any, it's just for some dbus messaging. It's not like anything important so i just live with it i just don't like system d i hate it so i prefer to stay away from it personal opinion i've seen a few things with it especially when it comes to like setting up larger uh, btrfs rate arrays that have like multiple arrays um I just seen seen some things that have scared me, especially when I uh, read in the bug report and got to some solution that said pretty much there is no solution. This is a system D issue, and you're gonna have to make your own custom UDEV rules file for this because of this and this. That's how I was like, okay, you know what? You know, I don't know if y'all know this, but um, when system D is first getting pushed mainly by Red Hat into the Linux environment. Uh, there was a big fiasco over at Debian, and some of the employees actually quit um, because they didn't want it, and a lot of other guys didn't want it either. It was just way too confusing, way too different. And uh, start looking to it, it's like a big giant spider being placed on top of the kernel and networking and your DNS resolve.com file and use controls over control over certain things and you have shut down more services to regain control over and it gets into a nightmare 
So I just live with basic stuff like this because it doesn't bother me at all. I don't mind if I have like a little dependency air problem for like D-Bus or something or else or, you know, I'm just operating with a band package here and there. I just don't mind. Because in general, the system works the way I want to work and I'm not fighting with it too much. Oh, so yeah, uh, if you notice, I did um, Samba Common and then Samba. Uh, one of the reasons was kind of has to relate with one of these messages. I, I just had to do it in that order. For y'all, y'all are just going to have to do app, sudo apt install Samba. But for me, you know, this is un uh, I'm not really editing the video that much. Just so I was just, you know, I'm trying to break down things as I do some of these tutorials just to give y'all a better understanding of why I do things or why this and that. So. Just so it kind of helps y'all understand and um, just give y'all my recommendations and stuff. Okay, so let's clear this out. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're going to be doing it based on Dev1 or Debian. Uh, in reality, this is like a fail-safe tutorial, so it's pretty much going to work on just about any distro out there. You might have to disable like App Armor or something like that, but this is going to be like a naked smb.com file we're dealing with it's going to have like subnet the shares and like your global config only everything else is going to be gutted so to get started let's go ahead and do sudo app install samba-common and enter yes okay and just to ignore that we crypto and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm on a gutted kernel here and I've, the system's like highly tuned for performance. Um, Okay, clear. CD, ETC, Samba, S, uh, LS. There we see the smb.com file. So sudo um, nano smb.conf, enter. Okay, so now the fun part. Let's exit. X, 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 X. And keep Xing here. So we're going to keep the work group. Uh, and we're also going to keep all this stuff tabbed out just to make the configuration easier to see and understand. Tab over and just do hosts allow equals. So. Uh, we're just going to do across the entire subnet that uh, slash 24 is equivalent to 255.255.0. It means the same thing. Just a shorter way to type it. And I forget how the host allow option handles either or, but I know how it handles this one. No, we're not going to bind it. We just want to bind it to that. We're not going to do all this stuff. Um, I'm not even going to do login or anything. Uh, let's see the point of this. So it's all getting next. All of it. I'm not even going to do the printer setup. Like I said, this is a fail safe configuration. Uh, I'm sure y'all have had a lot of issues too. I mean, I've had issues with PAM and App Armor, and I've had to play with the configuration file sometimes get to work. And when you're in a production environment, sometimes you just got to have something deployed and you got to move on to the next task. And, you know, you're only using this for internal use. And your network should already be locked down anyway internally, so you shouldn't have any random IP buddies on there uh, having all the fun checking out your network anyway. So, okay, so since we're doing a fail safe configuration, this is going to be bare minimal. So, we're only going to put the absolute minimum amount of items we need to create just a basic Samba share for just being able to write to the folder, download files. You know, just a just a regular shared folder. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we're going to create a home share. So it's going to be uh, bracket, bracket, and then home, like that. And now whatever you put in this green bracket is whatever you put in this green bracket 
is going to actually be the name of the share. So, uh, in the next line, we're going to go down one, or tab over, and we're going to type the path. Now, anything you put here is going to be the actual path of the, the actual shared folder. So, we're going to go path equals forward slash home, and then forward slash USR. So, I want to share the main home directory for my user you know so in that folder is like your downloads your desktop and you know your standard user files so um just a standard user for me is user usr so i made that user right there user and i want to share that folder <clears throat> uh so now i'm going to go down a line i'm going to tab in and we have our path so when you type home here, it knows to go to this path on the share. Now we're going to type in valid users. Okay, so the path you have to have, the the actual share name here that's being shared as you have to have, and you have to have a valid users. So if you want to, so uh, I'm obviously sharing that the u user folder or USR short for user. Uh, and so the valid user I want to use is USR. Um, so uh, this is another line you have to have is valid users right here. And then we're going to enter down one tab in, and we're going to go writable equals yes. So writable equals yes. So if you don't have this writable equals yes, by default, it's actually not going to be writable. Uh, at least, I believe, for most cases, it, it might change with different sample versions, et cetera, et cetera. But this is pretty much your bare minimum failsafe config. So if you see a lot of other Samba configuration or smb.conf files, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff in there. Most of it's not needed at all. Uh, like, you don't really have to create a directory mask, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe in specific situations for like certain executable functions and all that. But to keep it simple, you just want a shared folder. This is actually all you need in your smb.com file. It's not much at all, but it's, you know, we want to set up a quick Samba share. No one spend hours and hours on it. Here you go. Your fail safe config. Um, so this is all you need. But we're still not done. So uh, important notation here. Uh, so we're sharing this path now if you're sharing it when you're saying okay, we're giving uh, we're saying this is a valid user now because it's uh, Linux you're going to have to make sure that the folder you're sharing is Owned by this user or that user belongs in the group with the same permission. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that so what I mean by that is we go to our home folder here uh, ls okay so it's user so it's obviously already owned by uh, user but uh, just to show you if I was to create a another folder so let's say um, I'm just gonna do mkdir test uh, oops sudo so sudo mkdir test so right here we made a test folder okay so ls dash l okay but so because i made it with sudo it's owned by root so now let's go ahead and go back into sudo nano smb.conf and i'm gonna create another share here and we're going to call it the test share and the path is going to be path equals home test valid users equal usr tab in writable equals yes so we do that right here so we got the writable the valid users and the path that's it so we're sharing another folder the only thing different is this folder is owned by the root okay now let me show you where the problem is going to lie here so sudo rc service so we're going to go ahead and restart the SMBD or the SM, SMB daemon. Uh, it might be a Samba daemon, uh, different distros, daemon different ways. For me, that's the name for me. So I restarted it. 
Uh, now I'm going to go over to my Windows machine. And let me turn OBS on Windows real quick. Okay. So we're now on my Windows machine. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my computer, this PC here. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address of my Linux host, which would be 7777772. And I'm going to go ahead and enter. Okay, so as you can see, these are my two Samba shares, home and test. I can double click on home. I'm in right away. Uh, let's create a folder see if it's writable. And it's writable. It works great. So it's fine. Now, if I go over test, I'm in the folder. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. You need permission to perform this action. So it's inheriting the default uh, uh, USR permissions for that folder, but it's owned by root. So as you can see, we're not, we don't have full capability of this folder. And that's because uh, we're not actually obeying the Linux permissions. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to go back to... Okay, so I'm back on the Linux host machine. Let me clear that out. Uh, sudo nano ecsmb. So as you see right here, we have valid user of USR. But through ls-l, that test folder is on by root. So when you're creating a share, so uh, root user and then root group, same thing. So uh, generally, whenever I set up a Linux machine, uh, I create a USR for user and I create a USR for group. So you're going to want to make sure you have a group with those permissions and you add those users to that group uh, to make it easy because I'm usually on my main rig. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just do USR for a user and a USR for a group. And then whenever I'm setting up a share, I just do the same thing. So we're going to do a uh, chown. USR, USR, and then we'll go to do the test folder. And just, I forgot sudo there. sudo chan user user test. Okay, test folder. Now, if we go back to the Windows machine here, let's go ahead and try to create a folder in here now. Hey, look, it worked. So, and we'll create another folder. And we'll delete the folders. As you can see, it worked. So it works fine. Uh, and just see how good that share is working speed-wise. We'll take this DaVinci and we'll drop it in there. Okay, one gig a second. Okay, it's on a 10, uh, 10 gigabit network. So I use uh, Samba for uh, my internal LAN and just for speed and efficiency. And then, like I said, I use SSHFS going out to the internet. Um, as you can see, that was like, it was going great. It was nice and fast. You saw one gig a second there. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That was uh, your fail-safe configuration for Samba. I bet you all a lot of you didn't know that you could have that lightweight of a Samba configuration. But as a matter of fact, you can. So I'll show you the smb.conf file again. This is all you need. This is your fail-safe configuration. Now, if it doesn't work... You might want to try disable app armor um, if it's configured in a certain way where it actually give you problems with that. But this is it right here. This is all you need. Your fail safe config. You want to deploy a, a, a Samba share on a, uh, if you want to deploy a Samba share on an LAN or in a production environment and you want to get the job done quick and efficiently, this is it. Here you go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if I helped y'all out or if I help you uh, in your work environment or whatever you're doing, like and subscribe. You know, uh, you can also support the channel. And uh, what I'm doing here, let's help get the community rolling. Out. Oh.